Feedback. This section introduces a discipline in leadership which is one of the most difficult for many managers to master. A discipline that can develop strong foundations when mastered well or tear down foundations when it is not mastered well. Enter the leadership path, lead and manage development to get practical tools and examples of developmental feedback. Feedback is one of the most misused tools in management. At the same time, it is so very effective when being used appropriately that it deserves having a favorite place in any manager's toolbox. Feedback is a tool that can develop, recognize and set directions when used in a good way, and it can tear down foundations when used in a bad way. Feedback is unfortunately often used to deliver criticism. With the word constructive tagged on, it often becomes an alibi to criticize. Constructive is not the same as criticism. Most people like to improve and develop, but most people dislike to be criticized. Being criticized for what we believe we are good at is the worst thing that can happen. Most people do not actually like to criticize others, and yet most of us occasionally have a great urge to do so. Depending on our personal profile, we have various outlooks in relation to receiving criticism. For instance, the hunter, ready to attack. So what do you mean by saying that I can improve? The scientist, in a critical position. If what I do is wrong, how do you know what the exact right way is? The conqueror, in a vulnerable position. I thought I did a good job. I've heard that from others. The nurse, in an inferior position. Do I do any of it right? We are also on different viewpoints when we want to give criticism. For instance, the hunter, ready to attack. This is how it should be done. The scientist, in a critical position. Based on my calculations, this is the right way of doing it. The conqueror, in a vulnerable position. I think you could benefit from. I have seen others do that. The nurse, in an inferior position. It might be wrong, but perhaps you could. Constructive means to construct and that you build something up. Feedback is a tool to help develop the individual to be even better. Feedback should not hurt, but instead point at directions which can develop the employee to become even better. Good feedback develops employees and builds strong foundations. Feedback is best received if the recipient has said yes thanks when asked if they want to receive feedback. Although the feedback is then delivered in a clumsy way, the recipient is mentally prepared for it. As a manager, it is a part of the task to give feedback, and if there is trust between manager and employee, then it is not a challenge to ask permission to deliver feedback. For instance, I have a written feedback for you. Do you want it? If I should give feedback to you, what would you prefer me to focus on? If I should give you feedback, when would you like it to be? Now that we will both attend the meeting, is it okay that I give you feedback afterwards? We all need feedback to develop to the maximum. We cannot see ourselves 100% and need others to see for us as well, and then tell us what they see. We do not need to be judged, but we need new perspectives we can choose from. A manager is responsible for developing others, and has therefore also the responsibility to see what the employees do when they are in action at work, and then give feedback to the best of their ability. The technique can be learned, and it still requires lots of daily training throughout the time of being a manager, in order to excel in this discipline. Everyone wants to know if they are good, if they are successful according to the demands of their surroundings and how they can become even better. Do I make a difference? Do I make the right difference? What am I good at that I should continue doing? What can I benefit from learning to be even better? Good feedback is based on what the employee is good at and from there add new learning and development. Unfortunately, it is often seen that a manager's starting point is what the manager believes that he himself is good at. The manager does not understand why the employee is not simply doing things the way the manager would have done it. When the starting point is the employees and not the managers, then it is easier to support development since it is the employee who is driving the development. Many leaders become disappointed when the employees are not performing as the manager expects. It can be a great advantage if the manager thinks of the word interesting. When thinking of the word interesting, it gives an opportunity to think twice. When the starting point is that we as humans want to do a good job and we still do not live up to the manager's expectations, then it is time for the manager to think twice. If the employee does not have the competence which the manager expects, which competence is it then that the employee has and how is it possible to develop it? Good feedback contains both what the person is good at 
and should continue doing, and what the person can benefit from doing in order to become even better. Both when it comes to identifying strengths and areas of development, the manager needs to be specific, meaningful and detailed. Specific and meaningful. If feedback has focus on the development required to meet tomorrow's demands, the requirements should be meaningful. To be meaningful, the requirements must be in accordance with the company's vision and mission, values and strategy, which the team is working according to. It is important for the employee to know exactly how he or she makes a difference according to these. It is not enough to know that the vision is to be customer-centric. What specific actions should the employee take to be customer-centric? And what should the employee not do? Details and examples are required too to understand the message completely. Then the employee does not have to guess what the manager is thinking and perhaps fail because the understanding is not there. Detailed. The example of being customer-centric can be made more detailed by finding out what the difference that makes the difference is in a customer-centric world. The difference that makes the difference is, for instance, what makes the customer feel special. It could be the last sentence in a phone call, I wish you a really nice weekend. Or in the first phone call from a customer who's complaining, I am really happy that you're calling me. If you had not done so, we would not have had the chance to become better. It could also be a call to the customer after the customer has purchased. Are you satisfied with your purchase? Have you had any problems? Is there anything I can do for you? Or the remark as the customer walks out of the door. Thank you for buying in our store. I am looking forward to see you again. Call me if you have any questions. If the feedback is not specific, meaningful or detailed, it does not help the employee to understand what he or she can do exactly in order to become even better. A feedback like, you are not handling the customers well, is not informative enough. The employee is forced to guess what the manager means. For instance, I'm not kind enough. I do not know enough about our products. I'm not old enough. I do not smile enough. I do not give enough discounts. What is right and what is wrong? Employees would like to know whether they make a difference or not. If they do not perceive that they are making a difference, it becomes just a job like any other job. If it is just a job, the loyalty is at stake. I make no difference, so why should I stay? Most people would like to do a good job, but without recognition and appreciation for working in the right direction, many of us will be in doubt whether we add any benefit at all, and then why stay? The personal recognition and appreciation is when the manager observes what each employee does and then recognize and appreciate each employee accordingly. In order to do that, the manager must be on the floor to see what happens. The manager can choose to recognize and appreciate immediately after having observed good effort or collect observations for the monthly follow-up meeting. The manager can also choose to collect the observations and deliver the recognition and appreciation at an event and celebrate in the presence of others. The manager can also choose all of the above. When we recognize and appreciate on a personal level, we are building upon what motivates that particular person. The more we align with personal motivation, the stronger the part of the foundation which work for the employee becomes. Once again, the employee will be confirmed and continue to do what he or she is good at. Regardless of whether it is the individual employee, team or organization, it is, as mentioned previously, important that the recognition and appreciation is based on what the employee is good at. If the employee must develop in an area because they are required to in the job, and where development is outside the employee's preference, the manager can benefit from recognizing and appreciating what that person is less good at, but where there is potential for further development. It is useless to expect more than small steps to be taken in development when it comes to a person with low preference in the field that is necessary for that person to develop. The manager must recognize and appreciate the person's development regardless of whether the steps are small. It may be perceived as large steps for the employee. Again, many managers might think, I cannot recognize someone for something that I already expect them to do. Managers with this starting point may not be fully aware of the value of recognition and appreciation. If the development is seen as a major challenge for the employee, then he or she needs encouragement along the way. Of course, the manager can consider whether he or she has set a strong team and whether the requirements from the outside world are too large for the tempo at which the employee is developing. If the answer is yes, the team is set right, then the manager has to be patient with the employee in some areas and be happily surprised in others. 
Everything depends on how much the employee has preferences to, which covers the organization's needs, and how much they have to work on preferences, which do not come easy. Think again on preferences as right and left hand. You can probably use both hands, but have preference for one of them. Test your preferences with this exercise. If you are right-handed, then write your name with your right hand. Use your left hand if you are left-handed. Please write your name with the opposite hand. What you have just done is an expression of preferences. If you are right-handed, you can train your left hand to become almost as good as your right hand. It is a choice that you make. If you of course did not grow up in an era when many parents and teachers forced the left-handed children to write with the right hand. This is how it is with preferences too. It is the manager's and the employee's choice whether they want to work on what does not come natural. At the same time, it is a dialogue between the employee and the manager as to which preferences and skills are needed in the job. People are different and with different preferences. If the manager's and the employee's profiles are not alike, then there is a risk that the manager will become impatient with one or more of the employees. If we do not take into account the individual's preferences and the speed of development that is possible for each employee, then we take a risk that the foundation of the house will be destroyed. Maybe we will even dig a cellar which no one needs and which will make the foundation even more unstable. The hunter. It can be beneficial to strengthen the hunter's foundation like this. Make sure that there is a visible proof of who is the better one in something so that the hunter can see that things are going well. Regularly, for instance once a week, there must be focus on results so the hunter can get recognition through the results which he or she has achieved. There's no reason to be afraid that the hunter will use the results to try to get a salary increase. The manager must create clarity in the wage negotiations and explain specifically what it takes to trigger a salary increase. The good results can be celebrated through recognition and by pointing to the development of what is not a preference for the employee. For instance, your results are truly magnificent and you have outperformed on sales in this quarter. I have noticed that you are quick on foot at getting the work done and that you see what it takes to bring you the fastest way of closing the deal. I have also noticed that you want to work with the VIP segment and I believe there is a good opportunity to do that. What you need to do to achieve this opportunity is to focus even more on team collaboration. I look forward to seeing you spend at least seven hours a week on tasks to be solved by the team jointly and that you will also contribute at the monthly team meetings, giving your experience on how you have managed to outperform so that other team members can learn from that. Once again, I congratulate you on your excellent result. In the example, the hunter has been recognized and appreciated for the good results and at the same time has attained the opportunity to work with something prestigious through demands for development. It is recognition and development at the same time and it does not cost anything. Here are more examples of how to recognize the hunter on a personal level. Make sure that there are small competitions in between which the hunter can get energy from if he or she wins. It doesn't have to be work-related and serious since the hunter gets energy from winning no matter what. Offer a small prize to the one who completes a task, which no one else bothers to solve, and make it clear that the prize will be won by the fastest person. It does not matter what the prize is, since it is the competition itself and winning that matters. The gift must be, of course, in tune with the employee's salary level. For some hunters, a nice book is enough for others, it is a safari in Africa, and others will be happy for a day off or a bag of sweets. If the manager wants to recognize and appreciate the hunter's left hand, then he must notice when the hunter is caring about others, when the hunter is focusing on the team's progress more than his or her own success, and when the hunter takes the time to listen and understand others. For instance, I noticed that you helped John see new opportunities in the customer dialogue. And it seems like he has now had the courage to contact the customers again. If he succeeds with the customer, you have helped him to have more courage. Well done. The hunter must be celebrated with visible evidence for others to see the trophy. The scientist. It can be beneficial to strengthen the scientist foundation like this. Be clear about the success criteria. The scientist does not want to deliver something that is not perfect. Some scientists are only satisfied with the solution they've made when, for example, the customer has purchased the solution 
and has used it for two years without returning with a complaint. The scientist is very critical, especially of his or her own work, but also the work of others. It can always be better. There is a tendency to try to reach own demands, and when he or she is almost there, the goals are set even higher. This is because things can always be better. Consider how small the chances are that a scientist succeeds in own eyes when they always raise the bar just before they are about to succeed. Offer time and space to deliver quality. Rules and expectations that changes constantly are demotivating and so is lack of time to do things right. It is not a matter of being against changes. It is a matter of having space and time to do things right. The scientist appreciates quality assurance and likes to work on their own without disturbing elements. A disruptive element can, for instance, be greater or smaller social gatherings or a manager always looking over the person's shoulder, unless it is to exchange specialist knowledge, of course. Be private and work-related. There is a need to be recognized and appreciated for quality delivered, but not too often and also in a more private way than is the case with the hunter. Public celebration is not the preferred style, whereas a personal dialogue focusing on details in the solution delivered is clearly preferable. Make sure that there are intermediate aim that can be celebrated. For instance, the last project meeting had some really good elements. You gained ownership for the first draft of a model and you also secured a timetable for the next period. I have also noticed that your first solution is brought forward on the basis of a well thought out analysis and your detail with the X-Rotor is remarkably well invented. Here are more examples of how to celebrate the scientist. Discuss the task. The scientist is working according to the motto, first work and then pleasure. Show that you understand what the scientist is working on through recognition of specific details, quality and or creative solutions. It gives the celebration an extra strong dimension that it comes from an equal who has noticed the unique qualities of the solution which others do not immediately discover. The manager can gain that specific knowledge by asking interested questions along the way and then he or she can celebrate achievements with appropriate intervals according to what the manager specifically knows now that he or she has asked about the work. Create opportunities which require a logical and systematic effort that contributes to the long-term success. Comment on how important it is for your team to have a specialist to lean on and whom you can rely 100% on being able to solve the task. Note also how important it is to know that the content of the solution can be trusted 100%. Explain that what the employee is doing is part of a larger reality which supports the company in achieving its overall objectives. The Conqueror. It can be beneficial to strengthen the Conqueror's foundation like this. The Conqueror prefers to be recognized and appreciated for having made a noticeable difference for others. The very best that he or she can be celebrated for is to have helped or been the main reason that people, for instance colleagues or customers, are progressing at a pace they themselves had never dreamed of. It does not give a lot of energy to be recognized and appreciated for having cleaned up the kitchen or having solved more tasks than others during the day. To solve the task in itself is not worth striving for, but to solve the task and at the same time having made a difference for other people, that makes sense. Be aware that the conqueror can have difficulties in receiving praise. They can be very skilled in giving others credit for what they have created themselves and when some people then take credit themselves for what the conqueror has achieved, then he or she feels awfully cheated, especially if it's a hunter who takes the credit. They want other people to look good, especially the silent fury advocates who do not put themselves in the limelight. Justice is in this context important for the conqueror. Be aware that it is necessary to tell the conqueror exactly what was the difference that made the difference and its reason for being a success. The conqueror might or might not know already. However, irrespective of that, there is a need for recognition and appreciation. The conqueror has a greater need for recognition and appreciation than most people do because they have a tendency to ignore the recognition and appreciation when it comes. It can also be that particular employee who irritates the manager the most because he or she is constantly trying to get recognition and appreciation. That will decrease if the manager is good at recognition and appreciation. The conqueror is often standing out from the crowd, just like the hunter does, where the hunter normally only does it when he or she is convinced that it will be a success. The conqueror does it to heal the world and make it even better, 
and that means that the chance to be less successful is greater than for the hunter and also much greater than for the nurse or the scientist. In order to stand tall when the wind is blowing, there is a need for an even stronger foundation and thus the recognition and appreciation from the manager. Since the hunter generally has great self-confidence, he or she is better at blaming others or the situation when things go wrong, whereby the conqueror takes it personally, since the worst thing that can happen, as stated earlier, is that the other people do not like him or her. It is not the money that is the biggest driver, it's the mission. Therefore, do not be afraid that recognition and appreciation will cost too much. The larger and more courageous the mission is, the more everybody will get out of it, also the manager. Here's an example of how a conqueror can be recognized and appreciated. Your ability to get your team engaged on a for many unattainable goal has been unique. At the same time, you have also shown the ability to drive the necessary transformation through in order to achieve the high goals. With your enthusiasm and belief in that it could succeed, it also happened. Here are more examples of how to celebrate the conqueror. Focus on what personal difference a conqueror makes for the group. It is all right to mention the result, but it must not stand alone. The premium may very well be even greater challenges with enhanced possibilities of gaining influence on strategic matters. Acknowledge by listening for perspectives on the teams or the company's bigger picture, which is perhaps far from one's own thoughts. Let the employee lead change, even if it's not completely transparent what the change will mean. Invite the employee to share his or her view at levels that are higher in the hierarchy. The nurse. It can be beneficial to strengthen the nurse foundation like this. Focus on people. To recognize and appreciate the nurse for good results can be okay, but it just does not give energy. It might even be so that they can become so nervous to be recognized for achievements that they slow down. This is to protect the ones who is not up in speed. It might be so that it is their best friend at work who is not living up to expectations and they want to be in line with their comrade or use their own time to help their friend. Conversely, the nurse can be recognized and appreciated for providing a constant predictable performance and to engage in cooperation with others about tasks. The nurse can also be recognized and appreciated for being something special for someone else or that what he or she is doing has a positive impact on the working environment. The nurse is really good in remembering birthdays and anniversaries and this kind of celebration is also a part of creating a good working environment so that the nurse must be recognized and appreciated for caring. The nurse is usually relatively skilled in noticing when others are feeling well or not and what it takes to better the mood. The nurse is also excellent in getting things done when it is reasonable, foreseeable what has to be done. It is nice for the nurse to know what to do and in what order. The nurse finds their strength in logical systems by which tasks can be handled in. They love to reuse systems they have built. When the step-by-step -step systems are in place, the nurse can work at a very high pace and recognition and appreciation for the speed in their work is appreciated. The unpredictable can, however, disturb the logical systems and thus lower the speed. Most managers mistakenly find that the nurse in general is reluctant to changes. What is important to know is that the nurse is reluctant to spend time on constantly rebuilding the systems. If the manager is either a hunter or a conqueror, who are not very occupied with working effectively with structured systems, they tend to forget how important these systems are for the daily operations. It is necessary for the manager to create clarity through expectations for what the nurse should do, recognizing that he or she needs a step-by-step -step explanation to be able to build the structure around the task. Here's an example of how the nurse can be celebrated. It is of great importance for all of us that you are on top of loose ends and are getting tasks completed. I see that you have an incredible ability to work your way through a pile of work and that you are also able to help others finalize their task when they have too much to do. Your ability to notice when your colleagues need your help is noteworthy, meaning much less over time. Here are more examples of how to celebrate the nurse. To support a colleague going through tough times. To put the social relationships on teams and companies' agenda. To draw attention to human consequences when changes occur. To say when a colleague needs special attention and care. To show how the workplace can become a calm and comfortable place to work. To tell others how they can structure their day. To keep focus on what is the right thing to do right now compared to what has been agreed upon. 
to comply to agreements which are created out of consensus, to seek consensus within the group. Recognition or insult? What one person can feel recognized for, another person will take as an insult. For instance, calling a scientist analytical is a recognition, but can easily be an insult for the conqueror. As a manager, you can help yourself by being curious about your staff. Study them and note, for instance, how does this person communicate with you? How does the person communicate with others? How does the person approach tasks? How does the person approach task in cooperation with others? In which way does the person perceive his or her work? How does the person relate to challenges? How does the person relate to changes? In which way does the person cooperate with others? Ask your employees to tell you what they need from themselves, from you and others to be energized. Let them also know what you need. Recognition from help. Oh, that you have been overperforming is only a sign of the bar being set too low. I'll just have to set the bar higher for you next time. How can one know if it's spot on? We can see on the persons we recognize, appreciate, celebrate, praise, or are given constructive feedback if we have reached the person in the right way. We can usually see how the body language is changing. The person might sit more straight, lean forward in the chair, get more excited, bring more ideas forward, smile more, sits more energetic in the chair, the eyes are more alive, speaks faster and or louder, highly talkative, there's more treble in the voice, walks faster, holds the chin up high. We can also see it in the way of working. This can, for instance, be a more focused effort, faster problem solving, and or a more flexible approach to the task and or the relationships. If in doubt, ask questions such as, what are you thinking now? How do you perceive it? What does it mean for you, what I've just said? How does it feel? Music